Hi, I'm Ray Cooley. I'm the Walla Walla Valley Farm to School Program Manager at the Sustainable Living Center. Our mission is to inspire healthy communities through food, farm, and garden experiences. And we do this through the use of school gardens in Washington and Oregon. We also work with both farms and schools or child care centers to get local foods into school meals. This helps make nutritious foods more accessible and it supports our local farms and businesses. So remember, if there's no farms, there's no food. So eat local. So what could be more local than your backyard? So today we're gonna to look at uh, how to start seeds, even in your house. If you don't have a yard, you can even just grow them on a windowsill in your own home. So different containers. If you have eggs, you can save old eggs and you can still use these because this is great. It has calcium for the plants and you can just put it right in the soil. An egg carton, so you can just fill this up with soil. Well, not soil, seed mix. And then also, if you have plastic containers at home, you can do a really big one, but you only want to fill it up just about halfway. An old mushroom container, a yogurt cup, and also toilet paper rolls. These are all things that you can use. Or an old milk carton, you can cut that in half and use that as well. But you can also make your own paper pots, which is what we're gonna look at today. So I've built, I did a couple here already. So these are two different kinds. And you just take newspaper, and if you don't have newspaper, you can go to the library or our VUB. They can probably um, get some, donate some for you. So for the first one, we're gonna do this little round one, and you're gonna take your paper, and you wanna fold it in thirds. And it doesn't have to be exact, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? You just kind of get an, an approximation, okay? And then you can cut it, or if you get a really good table edge, you can just rip it. So we'll take this, and then you can take a can or a jar, anything that's round, like a mason jar would work, or a can, and then you just want to roll it. But you want to leave at least an inch at the bottom, so you want to roll this up tightly. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then you're going to take this and you're going to fold it about three ways. And then we're going to push down, get kind of a crease, and then you just pull it off. And then you'll notice that it kind of pops up. Well, that's easy enough. You just need to wet it at the bottom, and then it'll come together. And then once you put the soil in it, you can see it'll stay pretty well. All right. And then the next one, if you want to do a more detailed, we're going to do origami, and for origami, you need a sheet of paper, which is why newspaper works really well, but it's exactly two by one, so it's twice as long as it is wide. So, and then you're going to take the edges, and you're going to have them meet, and fold it in half, and you want to turn, and fold it in half vertically. These are good, make sure you get these good creases. In origami, you need really good creases. And then you're gonna take the non-open end and you're gonna start making an airplane. So you're gonna fold in the corners. And then for this part, you're gonna take just the top piece and you're gonna fold that to the bottom of your corners and then fold it again. Okay. Then you want to flip it over. And again, continue your paper airplane. You're going to fold these to the center line. And this last bit, similar, you're going to fold this to the bottom of your squares here, or your rectangle, and then fold it up again. Okay, and this is the hardest part. You're going to tuck this flap back behind here, and you can see there's a little corner there, and you want to go behind that corner. So 
So I find it best if I just kind of curl it a little bit and then I curl it into the one pocket and then I can curl the other one in. If I can show you. And then you're just kind of like stuffing an envelope. that down and you want to get nice creases then we're going to take the tip and we're going to fold that down to the top of this where it meets this flat edge and then do it again the other side and this final tip this is the trickiest part is you're going to take this tip to this corner and so you're just going to fold it over like this and you only want to crease this bottom part right here this this edge and then what you do you stick your hand inside and you can flip it and you're gonna fold this edge down and then push down the edges inside to crease them and there you go you got your own little origami paper pot and it looks just like this so then after you have your pots you need to take soil Before, and it's not soil. I keep calling it soil, but it's not. It's actually seedling mix because soil is a little too heavy. It, it, it's not, it doesn't get enough air and it also can contain diseases and fungus and weed seeds. So it's best to get something like this. This is mostly like either sphagnum peat moss or coconut coir, which is the coconut husk. Um, because they're really absorbent and then some vermiculite or perlite. So you can even make your own if you have those things. But basically you take the soil and then you just want to moisten it. Mix it up. And then you're going to squeeze it. And if it looks like that, it's about ready. It's, it's moist enough. But if water is dripping out of it, then it's too moist. And then you just take the soil and you want to fill up your little pot but I'm gonna want more than that because that's not enough but really when you're doing seed start this is only for big plants for like tomatoes or peppers or something or squash plants for the smaller ones like if you're doing greens or anything that's small like flowers you just want really about two inches and you just want about a half inch of space at the top and then you take your seed this is a lissum. It's great for pollinators. So when you're planting your vegetables, you also want to make sure that you're planting flowers that are going to attract pollinators. Okay, and these are really, really tiny. All seeds look different, but you just put, this one only needs an eighth of an inch of coverage. So you cover it up and then you want to gently mist it and not flood it with water. So I'm just getting it hydrated enough to get it wet in there. It'll take about 7 to 14 days, depending on the seed, to germinate. But you're, what are you going to need? You're going to need light. It could be um, artificial light. So I have grow lights in my, um, in my house. It could also be sunlight. But it also has to be warm enough, about 70 degrees. So if you're comfortable, then your seeds are going to be comfortable. Uh, and it needs water and space to grow, and that's it. If your house is really dry, you can also cover. So for instance, you can cover these in plastic. So for instance, you could take something like this and you can fill it up with all these little pots, especially the newspaper ones. Once these germinate, you want to start watering from the bottom up. So you're going to start putting water into the bottom because the newspaper and the seed starter mix is really absorbent and it's just going to pull it up and then it'll help the, encourage the roots to grow down deep you'll get a great root system when you do transplant it. And then when these have their first true leaves, you're going to transplant them. And um, the first true leaves, so you get your little seedling, but then it's the next set of leaves that come that we call the true leaves. And generally you want about two sets of true leaves. And then for this, you just dig a hole and you plant this whole thing in the garden. 
and make sure you cover up the entire thing, all the newspaper, everything, because if you don't cover up the newspaper, it will um, basically dry out. All right, that is